rainfall patterns of india rainfall patterns of india rain rainfall patterns of india now there are two kinds of patterns patterns means the distribution nature distribution of rain so there are two kinds of pattern we have to bother one with respect to time second with respect to the space so this is called the temporal distribution of rainfall in india temporal distribution of rainfall in the country or second is called the spatial or the regional pattern of regional distribution of it. so we are doing two individually first we are starting this one temporal distribution temporal distribution so what is temporal distribution and this I, both is very important to solve many of your prelims or mains question for understanding also required temporal distribution temporal distribution of rainfall in the country so temporal means with respect to time so there are three patterns three patterns so with respect to time one is called monsoonal rain called monsoonal rain second called before the monsoon that is called pre monsoonal rain pre monsoonal rain then after the monsoon called as what very simple logical post monsoonal rain is a logic to remember the things monsoonal rain pre monsoonal rain and the post monsoonal rain so monsoonal the meaning of monsoonal rain and with respect to time is from june to june till september the rainfall that india experience between june till september by the southwest monsoon by southwest monsoon by southwest monsoon wind that moves from sea to land between june till september the rainfall is called the monsoonal rain in the country called june till september by southwest monsoon so it constitute 80 percent of the total rainfall of the country total rainfall in the country what is the share of this in the year so that means india's rainfall is seasonal in character because of this rest of the time rainfall is less this is more 80 percent of the total rainfall occur during this time and it covers the entire india it covers the entire india except two locations it cover the entire india except uh, two points one is the koromundal coast koromundal coast of tamil nadu second is the north of north of himalayas north of himalayas adjoining to the tibet adjoining to the tibet so it it covers the entire India except Coromandel coast of Tamil Nadu and north of Himalayas in the state, actually two locations, Ladakh region, Ladakh region of Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh region of Jammu and Ladakh region of JNK and the Lahul Spiti, Lahul Spiti of, of Himachal Pradesh. Lahul, the Lahul Spiti is the, one of the biggest districts that is on the Tibetan side, beyond Great Himalayas. So you got these two geographies very much cleared. One is Ladakh in Jammu and Kashmir and Lahul, L-A-H-U-L, Lahul Spiti, S-P-I-T-I, Lahul Spiti in Himachal Pradesh. So total rainfall is 80 percent of the country. So now second point is pre-monsoonal rain, next is the pre-monsoonal rain, that means before what the timing of the rainfall should be what before june isn't it logical before pre monsoonal rain means before june. so this is your summer rainfall that occurs from mid february mid of feb till till the southwest monsoon arrival till the arrival of till the arrival of southwest monsoon it actually varies from location to location from Western Ghat, it arrives uh, in the June first week or second week, but we go into the northern plains, it arrives late. 
So, till the arrival of southwest monsoon, just we consider it as a June first week. June first week. So, that means for mid February, March, April, okay, mid Feb, March, April, May, till the monsoon arrival is declared. So, that rainfall is called pre monsoonal rain. So, now how the rainfall occur and how much the rainfall India experienced and where the rainfall occurred by this process. So, this pre monsoonal rainfall occurred by uh, by two or three processes, one by the western disturbance, one reason is what called western disturbance, second reason is called a tropical cyclones, second reason is tropical cyclones, third is a convection convectional rainfall by heating, simple convection processes by a heating like during summer when intense heating happens, so the, the vape, water vapors rises vertically upward, cloud formation and rainfall. So, there are three ways pre monsoonal rain can occur western disturbance phenomena by tropical cyclone, and th there is the convectional rainfall by the intense heating during summer. Intense heating during summer. So, this total rainfall, you know, it only 7 to 8 percent of the two of the country. What is the amount of by all the three? All the three mechanisms they are will produce pre monsoonal rain. First, western disturbance itself. You already know the western disturbance is occurred in which part of the country? Two geographies have been covered by western disturbance only. One is the northern mountains, right, northwest or western mountains. One is the western Himalayas, western. Himalayas means Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand. These are the first location, Ladakh, and all locations. So, western disturbance caused rainfall in western disturbance caused rainfall in the western Himalayas in the states of the states of Himalaya, JNK, Himachal Pradesh, and Uttarakhand. Second part, it also caused rainfall. It also caused rainfall in the northern plains, in the northern plains above anywhere above the Vindhyachal, above Vindhyachal ranges, above the Vindhyachal ranges the rainfall could be caused. There are two geographies, western disturbances causing rainfall, one is western Himalayas, second is northern plains above Vindhyachal from Punjab, uh, uh, Delhi, Haryana, Western UP, Bihar, Bihar up to Patna. So, this rainfall is from west to east, west to east up to Patna, up to Patna because after that the sources of moisture is absent. Please look at the process here. The rainfall coming from east or west, rainfall is coming from west and entering into the east and get it uh, after Patna the rainfall by this phenomena do not Okay. Why? The reason is, so there is a divide of moisture, no source of moisture is there. Okay. So, only two geographies. So, in what form it comes and when it comes, what is the timing? So, the timing is before this, so it could be any time like, like February, March, April, May, even in the first week of June also before the arrival of Southwest. Monsoon also. If monsoon is late, the reason even rainfall is caused, that is the reason is called western disturbance. So, it appeared with the help of westerly jet stream. Westerly jet stream. Who bring this rainfall? Who bring this rainfall to the country? So, westerly jet stream uh, bring rainfall from, bring or picks up moisture from, picks up moisture from Mediterraneans, from Mediterraneans and cause rainfall from west to east. So, that is called Mediterranean type of influence. Whenever western disturbance India experience is a kind of which influence? Mediterranean climate. Please think of it is a Mediterranean influence. Is it clear the sense? 
So sometime in prelims this word is used which part of India is having a Mediterranean climatic influence. Answer is what? Areas which receive western disturbance. That is your answer yes. Finally, without any logic. Okay. So, for, so it appeared in a form like two or three waves in a month, two or three waves in a month. It is not continuous rainfall. The nature of the rainfall is wavy in nature, like a jet stream is wavy in nature. So, like two to three waves of rainfall in a month maximum can occur. So, that is what the nature is. So, Kashmir rainfall, Kashmir rainfall is what generally in the winters or pre-monsoon or the post-monsoon is reason is western disturbance. This phenomena is not only in February, March and April and May. I am telling this phenomena is also in the post-monsoon. This phenomena is except the monsoon time June till September, it is prevalent in both pre as well as post-monsoon, pre as well as post-monsoon. So, western disturbance also occur, also uh, remain in the post-monsoon time as the post monsoonal time. So, I will not repeating that for another post monsoonal time. That post monsoonal time means what is that means after September, after September that means from the October, November, December, January all this also even rainfall is occurring in these same areas. In the same areas the reason is cited is called western disturbance. Is it getting clear? Okay, so I am not giving the importance to this post monsoonal time, but a total rainfall by this phenomena is around 5 to 5 percent, both pre and post. Total rainfall caused by the western disturbance in both pre and post is around what? 5 percent of the total rainfall of the country. So, the snowfalls in the snowfalls in the Himalayas cause, reason is what? western disturbance. So, this is also winter rainfall actually, this is nothing but winter rainfall in the northern plains or the snowfalls in Himalayas, snowfalls in, in the Himalayas. It produces cold waves actually. So, this is one point. So, second reason I said is what for the pre monsoonal rain, what is second reason you have written? What is, all right, tropical cyclone. Tri tropical cyclone caused rainfall. Tropical cyclone is also causing rainfall in similar pre as well as post monsoonal. Pre as well as post post monsoonal. Tropical cyclone also caused rainfall pre as well as post monsoonal in nature. So, the pre and post monsoonal in nature means the same timing like February, March, April, May, October, November. December, this eight months, so eight months of in a year, your cyclonic rainfall could be caused. How many months? Out of 12 months or eight months, then four months pre monsoon, four months post monsoon. So, monsoonal timing is only four months, isn't it? June till September, four months before uh, pre monsoon means four months, post monsoon also four months. This cyclonic rainfall is not occurring during the four months period of southwest monsoon. So, this situation is causing rainfall in the coastal areas of the country. Coastal areas where the tropical cyclone caused rainfall. So, it picks up moisture from the warm water bodies and moved towards the land and caused rainfall. So, the areas that receive rainfall by this factor is coastal areas. Which coast experiencing more? tropical cyclonic rainfall. Answer is east coast. So, out of the, you compare the east and the west coast, which come, which experience more? Answer is east coast. Eastern coast experienced more cyclonic rain than western coastal regions than the western coastal region. But the nature of this is like stormy actually, it is a kind of a storm, tropical, you already know. So, as a bring disaster in the coastal areas, bring disasters in the coast. Now, 
third factor third factor or pre monsoonal rain third factor only operate for the what call this convectional rainfall so convectional rainfall which caused by the intense heating during the summers caused by intense heating during the summer season so that's why this phenomena is only what called pre monsoonal in nature pre monsoonal in nature pre monsoonal in nature okay so now this rainfall is good in some location and even bad in some locations so this pre pre monsoonal convectional type due to intense heating comes out so regionally known by different names regionally known by different names so local names are been popular in prelims you might be asked prelims may be are the local names of convectional rainfall or the pre monsoonal rains or called pre monsoonal rains and the reason is what intensity or convectional type of rain so locally known by different names so few regions i'm talking about in within the country first is the northwest india first is the northwest india what it is called as next is eastern india and northeastern india what it is called eastern india and northeastern india which have the sources of water third is in the western ghats third is in the western ghats of india western ghats of india three geographies regionally or lo locally called by different names so what is in the northwest india this pre monsoonal convectional type which caused by this intense heating local phenomena it's a local phenomena it is not coming from somewhere else so in initially both the past process coming from somewhere else like western disturbances come from mediterranean cyclonic rainfalls come from oceans but it does not come from anywhere it comes from their own in situ process so by intensity so northwest india called by the name northwesters this phenomena is called what northwesters called by the name called northwesters clear second in the eastern and northeastern india it's called kal baisakhi is known by the name called kal baisakhi okay in western ghats like uh, even by state by state may be known by further different names like moving from maharashtra till kerala maharashtra till kerala but it in is in the state of maharashtra karnataka and the kerala so in the maharashtra called by simple it's good for the plantations and the so amravarsha that's locally called by the name called amravarsha similarly in the kerala is also called with same in english translation called mango mango showers but in karnataka it is good for the coffee plantation which plantation coffee so that's why it's called cherry blossom so where is uh, beneficial this rain this rain is beneficial so western ghat it is good impact beneficial this rain is beneficial for the agriculture real part of like cherry blossom means coffee plantation or this for the mango cultivation it is beneficial for this purposes but northwestern also it's good actually so in the, during this time the north india you know especially punjab haryana rajasthan up bihar west western bihar or even some part of madhya pradesh also scorching heat actually delhi so when the rainfall occurs it provide relief relief from the intense heat intense so i remember like uh, in my time you know in delhi and all when the prelims happened prelim was timing of prelims was in may so when i used to give the examination upsc examination so the time was in the may and it was intense heat 
like temperature reaches around 45, 46 degrees Celsius and when this showers occurs, so that showers are what called nor westers, so you can understand. So, here the Punjab, so Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Delhi is so not MP, Rajasthan part, okay, or the UP, so all this is called Northwesters or called as what? Northwesters. Now, in the Eastern India, Northeastern India, it is known by the name called, now it is, call means what? Negative sense. So, we use this in which sense? Negative sense. Uh, so, so why, what is the negative point here? It, right, it adversely affect the petty cultivation of Eastern and Northeastern India. Adversely affect, it adversely affect the harvest of, affect the harvest of, of, of petty cultivation of Eastern and Northeastern India. Like, you know, so Eastern India and the, especially Assam and the, some part of Bengal and all. So, this, this region is known for paddy cultivation all throughout the year. Like, there is, like, suppose we call Rabi and Kharif. Here, in the Rabi also rice, Kharif is also rice. Every season, within a year, two or three times, rice, rice, rice. That is a type of cropping pattern exists there. So, that is a harvest time for paddy in that region. It got destroyed. So, that is a negative adverse. Rest is fine. Okay. Now, come to the second aspect uh, that is uh, after the monsoonal rain called post monsoonal rain. Post monsoonal rains. Post monsoonal rains in the country. Post monsoonal rains in the country. So, post monsoonal rains, guys, uh, you know the timings are very much cleared by now. Kaboga Barish. So, the rainfall is just October, November, December. If this is the timing of rainfall, maybe after also. October, November, December, this is the rainfall occurred by the called retreating monsoon, outgoing monsoon, retreating monsoon or called northeast monsoon. So, this rainfall in India is also called winter rainfall. Entire post monsoonal rain in India is also called. If question is, write a short note on what winter rainfalls in the country. You just leave every leave leave the monsoonal rain. Only talked about what post monsoonal rains in the country. So that is winter rainfall in the country is post monsoonal. That means October, November, and December. If retreating monsoon or northeast monsoon is causing the rain. So you know already by day before yesterday I think we did this about which region it is causing rainfall two three locations it caused rainfall where Coromandel coast of Coromandel coast of Tamil Nadu South Andhra Pradesh South Ape Andhra Pradesh coast and one more location again and one Nicobar Islands and one Nicobar Islands so, retreating monsoon or northeast monsoon picks up moisture from Bay of Bengal when they are going back, it causes rainfall here. So, rest of the India, these winds are not causing rain. Okay. Rest of the time, you know it. So, that means October till the Feb, October till the mid Feb, or uh, this, okay, is caused by western disturbance, which already covered. Western disturbance. Again, western disturbance are operative in the post monsoonal time. So, the location already covered northern plains and western Himalayas. So, northern plains, northern plains, not the Assam plains, except the Assam plains, okay. Northern plains and the western Himalayas. These are the areas which receive rainfall. One more is there which is causing this called cyclonic rainfall again it could be any time october till the feb anywhere it could be there october till 
perhaps the rainfall may be caused by cyclone, cyclonic rainfall. So, cyclone can cause in Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea and cause the coastal areas. So, both the coastal areas of India experience rain. So, already covered known. So, total rainfall by this is around or 10 to 12 percent. 10 to 12 percent of the country is rainfall, total rainfall. So, total share of post monsoonal rain is 10 to 12 percent. So, in this way 100 percent of India's rainfall varies timing. So, if you look at the share which share of rainfall, what time it is more? Naturally, the monsoonal time. That is what India's rainfall pattern called seasonal type. That is, it is not occurring throughout the year. It is occurring in confined in one particular period. Now, second distribution pattern, second distribution pattern that is called as regional pattern, which pattern called regional pattern of rainfall. Guys, in prelims, anyone try to disturb you by using this or that sentence, please go with this frame frame of mind, you will resolve this uh, crisis. And do not work on memory, I am telling you, do not work on memory, just work on reasoning, you will get the points. Now, next part is the regional pattern, regional pattern of rainfall, regional pattern of rainfall in the country, regional pattern of rainfall in the country. Okay, regionally means with respect to space. So, independent of the time. So, here the rainfall we are with respect to the space or geographical area. So, high or four. So, country is divided into five parts. Regionally, India is divided into five regions. Five region we call A, B, C, D, E regions. A region means very heavy rainfall regions, very heavy rainfall regions, very heavy rainfall regions. So, where rainfall is more than 200 centimeter a year, 200 centimeter a year, that is called very heavy rainfall areas and such geographies is climatic type called per humid regions, called per humid regions, called per humid regions. So, A regions are per humid. So, what are the regions in this country which are falls in this category? So, you know there are three geographies. How many geographies? Three geographies falls under this category. First is west of western ghats, west of west of western ghats of India. So, it include western slopes, it include what? Western slope and the western coastal plains. First region is west of western ghats, west of western ghats which means what? It means western slopes, western slopes of western ghats and the western coastal plains, western coastal plains. If you like the trend wise, like trend wise you are observing from Kerala to what called or right Maharashtra. So, from, so this like Konkan coast, Malabar coast, okay, all this coast. What is it called? Malabar coast, Konkan coast, Canara coast, here the rainfall is happening. Second geography is Northeast India, Northeast India. Second part is Northeast India by fall under the power humid region, northeastern India. So, it include the Assam, Upper Assam, Meghalaya, Manipur, northeastern states of India, northeastern states of India. Third region is islands, island groups of India, island groups of India. Third is called island groups of India. So, there are two island groups, we, we know it, Lakshadweep group of island and next called Andaman, Nicobar group of island, both. Andaman Nicobar Islands and the Lakshdeep group of islands falls under this. So, these regions are heavy rainfall areas, very heavy rainfall. Now, second part B.
Now, now heavy rainfall areas, next called heavy rainfall areas or regions in the country. So this is called humid regions, called as humid regions, called as humid regions. So where rainfall amount is, rainfall amount is little less than this, so it is around 150 to 200 centimeter a year. Suggest so annual average is what? Between 150 to 200 centimeter, it's called uh, humid regions or heavy rainfall areas or B regions. So it include the following regions in the country. So first it include the other slopes of Western Ghats. What is, the, so all adjoining areas of A region is what? This B regions, okay. So first is adjoining, adjoining areas of, of this called uh, A, A region or humid regions. Remember A, B, C, that's what I am telling. Just bordering with A is B region, wherever in the map you see it. So it includes eastern slopes, uh, not shadow region actually completely, it's not the shadow. Shadow is a coming to another part C or D or E, right. Like there, there is all the eastern slopes of western Ghats are not rain shadow everywhere. There are some inlet through that water can enter through gaps and all. So, so that is lies on other side bank, eastern slopes of what, western Ghats. That means there are people as confusing that entire eastern slopes of western Ghats are rain shadow, no. There are many areas in the eastern slopes of western Ghats under rainfall of 150 to 200 centimeters. They have entry, not all. Some areas on what, eastern slopes of Western Ghats plus Upper Assam, Upper Assam, Upper Assam means Eastern Himalayas, Eastern, uh, Eastern Himalayas up to 200 meters, up to, so that means foothills of Eastern Himalayas, actually the geography is what, foothills of, of Eastern Himalayas, foothills of Eastern Himalayas in the Upper Assam part is also part of it. Next is the eastern, eastern India, next is eastern India, next is which is not part eastern India. So what does eastern India means to you? Chota Nagpur plateau, started from where? Chota Nagpur plateau, Chota Nagpur. You know, remember Chota Nagpur is a region where both these streams meet, remember with two branches of monsoon? Arabian Sea branch and Bay of Bengal branch meets at Chota Nagpur plateau. Next is Bengal, West Bengal part. West Bengal, okay, West Bengal in Bihar, West Bengal, Bihar, Odisha, Odisha this coastal region mainly, Odisha the, okay, leaving these drought prone areas, leaving what called? Drought prone areas, entire Odisha, especially in the coastal deltic part is like this. Okay, even till the AP coast also, AP coast, North AP coast only, North A Andhra Pradesh coast, North, uh, not entire Andhra Pradesh coast, North Andhra Pradesh coast. Some part is also there, the hilly areas of central India, hilly areas of central India, because India's rainfall nature is what type? Out of many type of rainfall, uh, three types of rainfalls are there by which moisture rises. Most of the India's rainfall type is what or high rainfall areas is what? Reason is orographic, mountains. So wherever the relief features are there, rainfalls are high in, in nature. So the hilly areas of central India like Vindhyachal, Satpura, wherever moisture strike, it rises over and causes rain. So the Madhya Pradesh and some part of that, not entirely. So hilly areas of central India in MP, uh, uh, this called Jharkhand or Chhattisgarh or wherever it is. So this come under heavy rainfall region. One more location, foothills of, apart from this, foothills of Himalayas, foothills of, of Himalayas, foothills of Himalayas, because this also orographic rainfalls occur not only in central India, 
photographic rainfall also occur in where in the foothills of himalayas so it include bhabar plains bhabar plains remember tarai plains which two geographies from Punj the foothills of himalayas from punjab till the bengal so bhabar and tarai plains so bhabar plains and what called tarai plains, foothills bhabar plains and the tarai plains so these are the heavy rainfall areas okay now third part third region c region now third region is the c region written likh liya aap logon ne now c region is called it's called sub humid region sub humid region or the moderate rainfall region or moderate rainfall areas in the country or regions in the country so what are the moderate rainfall areas where amount of rainfall is between the 75 to 150 centimeters annual average rainfall lies between 75 to 150 centimeter is the sub humid region so it covered the large track actually it covered the large uh, track all across from the foothills of himalaya till the point comber large track of india from foothills of himalayas up to the point comrade so then it's covered the entire india actually so from the foothills of so it covered the western part more western central india western central india more and the peninsular india so large track so it covered the entire india for in specific so western northwest india first part is northwest india so in specific is what northwest india so it include what punjab haryana punjab haryana and the western up western up so it become the part of northwest india punjab haryana and western up next geography continuous belt so which part of uh, Aravalli is eastern or western part in Rajasthan? Right. The eastern part of Aravalli. Right. The eastern Rajasthan, eastern Rajasthan, eastern Rajasthan. Next is eastern Rajasthan means east of Aravalli. That is the meaning. Third part we go. Oh, this region also include the Madhya Pradesh, uh, this Maharashtra, rest of the India, Maharashtra, even Telangana, entire India would be there. Entire Deccan Plateau, Deccan Plateau is like this. Deccan Plateau means Peninsular India, Peninsular India. But within this Peninsular India, within the Peninsular India, there are, if you go interiors and interior, region will become D type. It will become what called D type. Within the Deccan Plateau, there are all regions which is a D type. Now coming to the next part so largest among a b c d e e all these five regions which cover the largest area geographically the answer is c type. it covers the largest track but it is absent in the eastern part of india it is absent in which part eastern part of india northeastern and eastern part of india and coastal areas are not here it avoid what this region is absent in where absent in where eastern india East northeastern India and coastal plains of India. Coastal plains, this is not there. And rest of the India will cover this. So now come to the D region that is called the semi-arid region, called as semi-arid regions. 
semi arid region semi arid regions are, are, are low rainfall areas low rainfall areas where rainfall receive per annum is less than 75 so actually is between 37.5 till 75 centimeter a year so what is annual rainfall range 37.5 till 75 centimeter a year so this is called semi arid low rainfall areas so it in include which part so naturally the areas are right uh, west of this region mainly the western part of this region so it include this part first not in northwest india so it include some adjoining areas of this south punjab first is southern punjab which is connected with rajasthan connected with that called so southern punjab southwest haryana Southwest Haryana, right, Western Rajasthan, Western Rajasthan, Western Rajasthan, not the third is it, okay, and North Gujarat, North Gujarat, Southwest Madhya Pradesh, Southwest Madhya Pradesh. Southwest, what? Madhya Pradesh, even Bundelkhand region, Bundelkhand interiors, not the outs, not the edges. Please avoid the edges of Bundelkhand. It receives rainfall. But the interiors are what? Bundelkhand. Interiors of interiors of Bundelkhand region. Both these states would be there. UP, South UP, South UP, and North Madhya Pradesh. Now, South EP and North Madhya Pradesh. So, it covered this Bundelkhand region. So, apart from this, in the peninsula, rain shadow areas. Next part is rain shadow areas of rain shadow areas of our peninsula. Rain shadow areas of our peninsula. Peninsula India. So, you know, where is peninsula? If you remember Deccan Plateau. Interiors of the Deccan Plateau is what? The semi arid regions. So, rain shadow areas of peninsular India. So, if you look at the yesterday, we have uh, talking about uh, talked about the uh, drought condition. Remember? So, the drought affected area. So, so drought affect, just remember it is the drought affected areas of peninsula. It all it comes out here like Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Marathwada, all this. So, it includes the states of Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and some part of Karnataka. Not entirely, some parts of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Maharashtra. So, just remember drought uh, in the rain shadow areas of peninsula part. Okay. No region. Next is Kalahandi region of Odisha also. Kalahandi region of Odisha. Kalahandi region of one more Kalahandi. Kalahandi region of Odisha. Kalahandi region of Odisha. That also a part of low rainfall areas. So now the last part is left out is very low rainfall areas. Very low rainfall areas very low rainfall areas very low rainfall areas are what called arid regions of the country arid regions of the country arid regions arid regions so what are the arid regions where rainfall is less than 37.5 so these are deserts technically is nothing but uh, it's a desert so here rainfall annual rainfall is less than right 37.5 but more technically in, even in the cold deserts you know rainfall is less than 25 centimeter year but being a tropical deserts it is a tropical country the rainfall is even a 37.5 or low the it uh, because evaporation dominate 
So, this will get evaporated, no vegetation can grow under this situation. So, when this is declared as desert, so nothing but these are desertic topography, desertic regions they represent all the deserts of the country. So, very low rainfall areas generally represent the desertic topographic regions. So, include only three regions in the country, it covered only three regions. First, third desert Rajasthan, third desert Rajasthan, Barmer, Bikaner, Jaisalmer, all this adjoining which with the, uh, with the Pakistan side, third desert in the Rajasthan, just westernmost Rajasthan is this. Okay, and next is the runoff, Kutch, Gujarat, next Ladakh region in the state of Jammu and this also does it. Not the entire, so done. So, the rainfall pattern is uh, completed. Now, if you remember A, B, C, D, E, so now application point of view, just uh, see its application. So, these are the rainfall regions rainfall regions of the country like A, B, C, D, arid, semi-arid till the per humid regions. So, A region till, so application where you can apply this. Now, I am asking which is the paddy cultivating areas without re reading anything you can guess from A, B, C, D, where is the paddy cultivating area, where iso height is more than 100. So, A and B even some part of C also you can go what, so this is more, more than 100 centimeter more than 100 centimeter a year. So, that is a paddy cultivating area, non paddy crops are where? Here. So, natural cultivating area we want to identify natural without irrigation I am talking about. Paddy cultivating area is where rainfall is A, B or even a C where more rainfall is what? More than 100 centimeter a year, paddy cultivating area, paddy cultivating area. Okay, you want to say where is the drought affected? So, where the drought affected would be there? So, this will be a drought affected areas which are more prone to the floods. This A and B are more, oh, just if you look at this, A and B are more affected with what called floods. You are getting this. So, you can apply in the cultivation, then apply in the drought or flood prone areas in the country. Even you can see this natural vegetation natural, which where is the moist vegetation would be there or deciduous forest, evergreen forest or semi evergreen forest, A and B, like if you are entering into C, D and E, so here the dry forest, so C, D, E is indicating which forest, dry deciduous forest, dry deciduous forest or thorny or desertic forest, but here is what monsoonal forest, moist forest. So, that means you can apply in vegetation, you can apply in agriculture, you can apply in even in the water resource, okay, like suppose water resource, not only this thing, which areas are rich in water resource and which are deficient in water resource, naturally these are rich in water resource, these are deficient. Now, if you are want to make uh, interlinking a river basin, so what is an approach? Transferring water from here till here. So, this if you have a rainfall pattern in your brain, you can understand climatic type, you can understand the different applications and usages. So, usage thing from water resource, agriculture, natural, vegetation, map of the country, you can think from the point of drought and flood prone areas, flood prone areas. So, this are or the application fields, application, you are getting this. So, it help you how to identify or delineate the, the application properly. Now, I done completed 